On the road to the Final Four, welcome to Lexington, Kentucky, a showdown in the SEC. The Auburn Tigers and the Kentucky Wildcats. With a win, Kentucky will be the outright champion of the SEC regular season. Auburn comes in ranked 15th in the country, two games behind Kentucky. Welcome to Courtside, everybody. I and Eagle, Bill Raftery, Tracy Wolfson with us as well. You can smell it. Madness is in the air. Not you. Not you. March, a day away, oh. Billy. And this has truly become one of the great rivalries in the SEC. Two coaches who can chat. Yeah. And two coaches who get the most out of their ability. And uh, you know, when you think of it, Auburn, a different team. They yeah. rebound rate. The other end, the three-guard system has been so effective of late. All right, let's check out the starting lineups for Auburn. McCormick, Dowdy, Okoro, and Purifoy with Wiley up front. Kentucky, Hagens, Quickly, Maxi, Richards, and Montgomery. They're riding a seven-game winning streak. They have won 11 of their last 12. Don Daly, KB Burdett Jr., and Patrick Evans, our officiating crew here at Rupp. Kentucky's last loss this season came to Auburn. And Kentucky controls the tip. And I think Auburn goes a little bit of it. And you'll see a lot of zone two, a little wrinkle. Hagens, who is the preeminent defensive guard in the SEC, one of the best in the country. Now we always talk about the guards, but the bigs are playing better. We've got to get some touches for them, too. Usually that curl and a lob, this time the shot. Short pop doesn't go for quickly. And rebounded by Auburn. Down he gets it back. Wiley. Oh, he hurt himself, too, I think. He just grabbed the left leg. A push was called underneath. He showed some speed to get down that floor. Big time counter. Uh, the two bigs went to the glass for Kentucky. You just see, stumbled a little bit. And I don't know where, the, well, they got the hand on him, I guess, a little. You might call that a little small change. Corner pop goes down for Dangel Purifoy, shooting it at 29% from three point territory. And it gets Auburn on the board. Very good catch and shoot three guy. Like the skip pass to him. A lot of pin downs, a lot of curls. And of course, the dribble drive that's so effective for this team. There's the get back. Inside, Montgomery denied by Wiley. Woo. Foul call. Boy, he really had him set Montgomery for an up and under fake and step through. And Bruce, the charming wit of Bruce Pearl. <laughs> for since his days at BC, he could deliver a comment. Is that on his business card? <laughs> Charm and wit? Well, it's amongst the many things he's been described as. E.J. Montgomery, part of this sophomore class that is leading the way for Kentucky, which is a rarity under John Calipari. Normally, it's the freshmen, but it's this group of sophomores that continue to get it done for Calipari's squad. It sounds like a knock by you. No, no, not a knock. I mean, it's he's reacting to the situation. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just stating facts. And it, it is interesting that for him to have older guys does such a great job Everyone's amazed that this kid is a player. Nice handle and help that time, Maxi. Okoro had it knocked away. Maxi off the glass. It doesn't go, but he's fouled. Boy, they worked hard on that gap defense. A great read. Okoro's going to be a terrific basketball player. 28% threes. Most of his game right now is the dribble drive. A great reaction by Max. And how about that little soft kiss? Just doesn't go down. But the help side defense, being alert, being in the right spot. Montgomery with the, the kick out. Auburn is averaging just under 13 turnovers per game. Tyrese Maxey shoots it at 82% at the line. John Calipari, 11 years, just flies by here in Lexington. The longest time was with us. <laughs> that seemed like an eternity with, with the Nets. No, putting up with the two of us. Oh. <laughs> We're tied at three. Half court set here for the Tigers. Excuse me. Now he's so good with the bounce. A nice kick out, and that's what they do. They stretch the D, and you better get on that guy. So Purifoy has nailed a pair of three pointers for Auburn. And off to a quick start on the offensive end. Okoro drawing the assignment on Hagen's out front. You can switch him on anybody on the floor. That's his versatility. Great defender. There's this empty side. Look inside, guys. He's right there. They go for the hook. Richards. Shot oh, it goes down off the glass for Nick Richards. A harsh little delivery. And he is a great target. Nice trap at the corner. 
Wiley in a crowd. Montgomery and Richards there defensively to greet the big man. Richards right at the rim, too, in case there's a miss. Pull up doesn't go. Hagens cleared by Wiley, who is averaging just under 10 rebounds per game. He's a double-double machine. Oh, oh, more than the roll to the rim. Big finish by Wiley and the setup by Dowdy. And that's what Bruce does. He gets the most out of his guys. Check out at the one then. 50 right at the rim at the other. Beautiful feed from Samir Dowdy, the senior. 8-5 lead for Auburn. Out of Philly, too. We had a chance. Tracy and I had a chat with him today. How much he's enjoying it. There's the lob when you get a piece of the lane. Richards slams it down. Nick Richards having by far his best season with Kentucky, averaging 14 points, 8 rebounds per game. Auburn's lead is one, coming off a 67-58 win over Ole Miss on Tuesday night. Osoro, the find inside, and that slipped to Wiley, but he lost the ball. Pretty good defensive went over by Hagens, too. He leans in, Wiley rebounds. Got numbers here if they give it up. Auburn looking to run. Three on two developing lob. Too, too high, high for McCormick. Too high and too late. But he does save it off the hands of Montgomery. Uh, just interesting, the speed of this game is amazing. A little step up on the defense, and all of a sudden you got a wide open look. Uh, not as clean as they would like, but nevertheless effective. Big key for Auburn in that win over Ole Miss. Their defense was re energized. That's really what they're built on. Held them to 58 points. Auburn has actually won two straight in the series, including that Elite Eight matchup. Last year in Kansas City. No one beats Kentucky three in a row, right? No, it, <laughs> literally. Even it overlaps years. Kid's good, usually going to the rim, but a settle here. Air Barrett from McCormick. Save. McCormick thought the shot clock was winding down, and it bounces off. I'm not sure why there was a reset. They got a shot clock problem here, too. Maybe they're just questioning it. Well, they never reset the shot clock on possession, and they did reset it even though the ball didn't hit the rim, and that's why McCormick shot it so quickly. His instincts were, I've got to beat the shot clock. We'll get a substitution here for Kentucky as Keon Brooks Jr. checks in, and he replaces E.J. Montgomery. I'll tell you, Bird, the speed of this game, well, you really have a difficult keeping guys in front of you. That's why you need weak side attention move on the flight of the ball. Auburn is deeper than Kentucky. They'll mix and match a bit. Maxey looks to the inside, loops it, Sestina in, and hits on the flip. How about this kid? Great pass that tells him, dictate which way to go. Kentucky shot it at 52% in the 69-61 at Texas A&M on Tuesday night. That includes 11 of 22 from three-point territory. Nice extra pass here. Wow, he is really feeling it. Dangel Purifoy connects on another tray. Oh, they're making a pay for overhelping. Purifoy, a senior from Centerville, Alabama, major athlete, very talented, and has found his role with Auburn this season. Pull up jump for Brooks, short. And McLemore knocks it ahead for McCormick. Race to the rim on a kick out. Gowdy, book it, How a three. That? How about that? Even numbers and yet the ability to find the guy. Terrific kick. Auburn has not missed from long range. Four of four and from deep. And they're not a great three-point. No. A, they're a chaser of Auburn shots. They are 12th in the SEC in three-point shooting, 30% collectively. Shot clock winding down with six. Maxi trying to take the baseline. Purifoy cuts him off. Really? Couldn't get it to go with the offhand. Great defense. Auburn pushing in transition again with McCormick. Okoro swinging. Now directing traffic, the freshman from Powder Springs, Georgia. Auburn is 5 of 8 from the field. McLemore's on the floor, too. He can shoot and make it super nice. Good. doubt he's got good feel. Knocked away inside, and the recovery by McLemore. Everything is clicking right now for Auburn. And this is when they can play small with McElroy on the floor. Post up or make threes. Good start for Auburn. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by 
the Alliance for Lifetime Income. Learn more at protectedincome.org. Buick, proud partner of the NCAA. And by AT&T. Back here inside Rupp, strong start for Auburn. Let's check out our AT&T fast analysis wrap. Hi, Eagle. You remember Tom Davis, the coach. Of course, there's a little bit of that flex look that he ran. A little tribute to the mentor uh, by Bruce, the pin down. Now he's so good at the point or off the basketball. The pin, the turn, the curl, organizing. Uh, get those toes set, and they have been like, And how about the dream shake? The bird wrinkle. <laughs> Samir Dowdy adding to the three-point party for Auburn. Wish I could do that. Not make the three touch the floor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you touch your toes, Bill? Barely anymore, but boy, they are shaking it up with their deep shooting. And Auburn has performed well against ranked opponents. They've won seven of their last eight games against teams in the top 25. Currently projected as a four seed by Jerry Palm, but you think there could be some movement for both of these teams? I do. They're really solid. Pro and this is up for grabs this year. Uh, there are so many teams that are talented enough uh, to run the table, and this is one of them. The lefties on this club can make threes and play multiple positions. McLemore, a 66% shooter, misses at the line, and a change for Auburn. Jalen Williams, who has come on strong over the last week or so, is carving out a nice role for himself. Big plays against Tennessee, active on the glass. They play hard, this Auburn team. 8 nothing run for Auburn. Quickly trying to get involved. Inside, Activity, McLemore, right. the body. Stream CBS Sports HQ, the completely free and always on sports news network, nonstop highlights, breaking news, and expert picks. Download the CBS Sports app on your phone or connected TV to watch today. Kentucky is three of eight from the field. They go long for Richards. Plenty of time on the shot clock here for Hagens. This is the, how do you defend the ball screen? Now they're going under on Hagens. They will not do that on this guy quickly. Nice denial of the post. It bounces back to quickly and a foul call. They're looking for a shooting foul. The foul is on McCormick. That's his first in the team. Oh, and it is McCormick picking up the personal. Quickly is heading to the line. <laughs> not a bad idea though. But I think the right call, not yeah. shooting. So that's four team fouls now on Auburn, and another five team fouls. The foul is on McCormick. That's his it is McCormick back to back for Bruce Pearl's point guard. So we'll get a change here with Devin Cambridge checking in. And this kid brings a lot of energy, Bird. Big Tennessee game, a big corner three against them. Jumps passing lane. They're terrific defensively, this club. Free throw shooting was a big storyline in the first meeting between these two teams. Quickly gives it up. Maxi fires. Too strong. And this foul's going to go against Kentucky. Richards is really upset. He's begging. So what Richards feels is that the other official that was standing on the baseline had it with a different perspective. He thought... KB Burdett was going to call the foul on Auburn. Instead, it's the second personal on Richards. That uh, changes the game for this club now. In a sense, though, it gets a deeper shooter on the floor at that four spot. 16 9 lead for Auburn. Dowdy. Nice hands. Deflected. It's Hagens who deflects a lot of passes over the course of the game. Now, you watch a lot of games where the speed, even on their half court sets of these teams. Mm -hmm really puts a lot of pressure on you defensively. There's that back screen and a, ooh, the flex screen. Okoro draws the foul on the inside. Now they're raving about this kid. Prospect didn't lose a game in high school. Pretty impressive. Once he widens the floor with his range. He's very poised, very mature. Good size and strength at 6'6", 225, and a high flyer. He can get upstairs. He's a senior. He is? You're looking at me. Oh. <laughs> oh, Bruce in a timeout this year. He's upset at his team. He thinks he's so mature. He goes through the line and goes, senior, 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 senior. He's the fifth senior. Yeah, he forgot. He's a freshman. No, no. He respects him and the way he understands the game and his growth that he 
Acts like he's been around that long. Very competitive, physical mindset. And it gives Auburn an 18-9 lead. This is a 10-0 run for the Tigers. We could hang around with a Coro maybe, huh? Develop our maturity. I will agree with that, Bill, for both of us. Largest home deficit this season has been 10 points for Kentucky. Sustina, give him a touch. He can make this jump or two, pick and pop. Maxi the curl. Nice. It's blocked by Wiley. Woo! Off the ricochet. Maxi is there in the right spot and pinballed right to it. How about Austin? A Wiley move. Goodness, was he up. 18-11, Auburn. Dowdy handling it now with McCormick on the bench. They use their screens great, though. Keep busy, bump, pop. And they got a little small change. I'm not sure if they give it to Hagen. Yeah, they do. That's Ashton Hagen's picks up the personal. So that's five team fouls both ways. John a little bit perplexed, but that's what that activity of Auburn does. Kentucky had 29 fouls called against them in the first meeting. Five players had either four or five fouls. Cambridge not shy. Unusual react uh, release, but to clean it up, just does his job. This kid's a professional rebounder. Austin Wiley is an old school big. Yes. In a world of basketball where we don't see a whole lot of those anymore. Well, mom and dad were athletes and players, Olympians. A uh, little nickel dimer here as Hagen tries to get off the screen. And Okoro gets picked up, but this team loves to chase it. They've been shooting threes great early, but if they miss, there's somebody to do the cleanup job. The big fella, a little bit large at the tip. Baylor and Florida State, 12th time that's happened on the same day this season. How many times has this happened this season during the timeout? For 10 grand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, incredible. It's almost like a premier goal right now. As you're trying to get, right, you chase the attack guy on this kid. That is pure jubilation. That's a juice. And I love a lot of friends. Now. Who is buying tonight, Bill? <laughs> a few lemonades will be dispensed in downtown Lexington. Kentucky led this one 9-8. Auburn on an extended 12-2 run. Austin Wiley has done his job on the inside. Tigers are making their threes. Foul was called on Okoro. Sixth team foul against Auburn. Nice little pick and pop. Sustaining it's a good look. Book it. Out of the timeout, the first make for Kentucky from the perimeter. That body of his, he read a book on toughness recently. I don't think he needed it. He's had a great career. And he to it down here in Kentucky, of course. Nice defense. Dowdy. Love, loves to go right. Floated upstairs. Wiley in a crowd. Out of bounds. He faced the double team, and he coughs it up. A pretty good reaction baseline. Didn't get a good look. And here's the first time all game, a little full court pressure. Initial, and then they release. So Hagens will handle it quickly off the ball. Quickly, just one field goal attempt. Three Auburn turnovers so far. Kentucky yet to turn it over. Montgomery really has any screens and face up little hold on that baseline cut. And that's going to mean free throws. That's 17 fouls now against Auburn. So Dowdy, I think, on that grab. One way of holding quickly. And Bruce Pearl just yelled out, that's a flop quickly to the free throw line where he's shooting it at 92 percent he is second in the nation in free throw percentage with a minimum of 100 attempts now this kid big time what a sec season he's had kentucky number one in the sec in free throw shooting collectively 79.3 percent looks like he got hit right in the chin there on the cut and why not sell it Bruce didn't care for it whatsoever. And a Boston College, right? Bruce Pearl. Oh. BC's own. And a Boston native at that. 1982 graduate of BC. It was a mascot just once, by the way. One day. Did you ever put the, were you ever the orange? I was like never chosen to be the orange. Dowdy a three. Long rebound. 
handled by Quickly. That's what you have to do, the long rebound, nice kick back. Yeah, Quickly could not hit it from the outside, it's knocked out of bounds. Tomorrow on CBS, why should Michael Bloomberg be the Democratic nominee? That's what he wants to explain to 60 Minutes. Plus, inside one of the most controversial war crimes cases in U.S. Special Forces history. Tomorrow, 7, 6 Central on CBS. That was Kentucky's first three-point attempt of the day. They trailed 20 to 15. Uh, they only make four or five, Bird. It's a little... Like a dribble drive, a little bit of a settle the last two trips, but once again, well, Riley gets tagged for it. Looked like a pretty decent rebound initially, but that little belly bump may have cost him. Well, I think that's just a clean yep. effort. Agreed. Woo. That's a play on. Yeah. And that's the second on Wiley, and Bruce Pearl is lacing into the officials. This is extended from the previous timeout. I thought you were say the previous game. <laughs> the previous seven seasons. Exactly. Uh, he is animated out there. But you're really punishing a guy who's just a professional rebounder. Understands that to go get him. And it sends Sestina to the free throw line. One and one for Kentucky. Shoots it at 77%. Made some threes. I mentioned that LSU game. He's got some touch, some physicality around the box area, and a great screener. Johnny Juzang in for Kentucky. Jamal Johnson in for Auburn. Now Johnny will really stretch the defense. Playing a lot more confidence. Had a great day shooting the ball yesterday in practice. Kentucky has posted 17 straight home wins over Auburn. The screen the screener well defended the lead is down to three see how they handle this they go under that deep on the floor Dowdy the jumper a great the over the it was over the top go the other way so more free throws Flanagan unless they knocked it out of bounds and he did it went over the top they got them settling down great as we noted three-point shooting team Howdy, terrific turning it up and getting in the lane and not doing that. A little zone look right now, matchup, a lot of pointing. Raff in the first meeting between these two teams, an Auburn win. Kentucky was minus 14 in the rebounding department. Hagens works it inside for the deuce. A nice read, took advantage with an overload. 8 nothing run for the Wildcats and the fans are into it here at Rupp. Purifoy got off to the hot start shooting. Crossover on Montgomery, baseline and kick. The jumper goes down for Johnson, the sophomore transfer from Memphis. How about that shoot with some confidence from deep? And it quiets the crowd, at least for the moment. Yeah, 39% free throw shooter, maybe their best percentage shooter. Working out front. Juzang. Quickly the dribble drive and the floater. That's their game. They got to get a touch of that blue. They can decimate the D, kick for an open look, or finish on your own. 23-21, Auburn. Under nine minutes to play, first half. Paint points in favor of Kentucky, 12-6. McLemore pulls the trigger. It has an unusual stroke that he has, but he can convert from D. But this is all about dribble drive, it heads turn. That's when they get you on the lob. If you do step up and address it, if you don't have this as part of your game, you can just not dominate in that lane. McCormick back in, playing with those two fouls. I'd like to see them go inside either with the drive or a catch. There you go. Okoro. And a foul on the pass against Kentucky. Okora had jammed up that leg a couple of games ago. Back in good health. It'll be Maxi returning, replacing Juzang. Keon Brooks entered on the previous dead ball. 16 fouls against Kentucky. Okoro, the spin. And he missed it too hard off the glass. Nice job checking out as well. Maxi up the floor in a hurry. He's played very well against ranked opponents, averaging 19 and a half points per game. He likes the bright lights, Bird. 
Michigan State, Louisville, and how about this? Triple drive. And break it down and finish. Tyrese Maxey, the penetration. We're tied at 23. McCormick trying to calm things down here for Auburn. Under eight minutes to go, first half. McCormick watched by Hagens, 10 to shoot. From the side, Johnson, well short. Nice run out, leak out, quickly is fouled. And it was Purifoy getting back defensively for Auburn. Pretty good speed and hustle, but the defense has churned it up right now by the Cats. Get down, getting ready, taking away dribble drives, challenging shots, and why not? An opportunity open floor. Great lead pass to give away at the tip. Our game summary here in Lexington, all tied up at 23. Kentucky's offense coming inside and at the free throw line. Wildcats are yet to turn it over. Auburn has made five threes. Let's bring in the third member of our crew. It's Tracy Wolfson. I am so much on the line for both of these teams, but Auburn trying to make history out here today. They've never beaten Kentucky three straight times, and they haven't won in Lexington since 1988. Bruce Pearl told his team about it this morning at shoot around, just two wins in 50 years. He said, it's going to take a special performance today, and then he quoted Kobe Bryant. He said, if you want to make history, you have to do historic things. They'll try and do just that today out here, Ian. And Tracy, motivation is never an issue for Bruce Pearl. You can see how into it he is, and his team consistently responds from every stop along his coaching path. He knows how to push the buttons. Boy, it's great to see Tracy without a <laughs> scarf. <laughs> True. And no gloves. weather Freezing. gear. Uh, she's been smiling since she got here. But you're right about Bruce. I mean, he just is a dynamic spokesman for this program. I mean, the people didn't think it could get done. Sonny Smith was the last guy to win in this building. That's he's right. Radio analyst now. Thinks he's one of the, just breeds confidence with his players, is what Sonny feels about Bruce and his staff. This is the 116th all-time meeting between Kentucky and Auburn. And the Wildcats have a record of 94 and 21 against the Tigers. Kentucky on a 14 to three run to regain the lead against Auburn. McLemore, great challenge. Sustina. Strong rebound by Brooks, and it triggers the break. This kid can get by. Hard cut by Maxi. How about put that ball right back in the chops? It's an 8 nothing spurt for Kentucky. Boy, if he had gone opposite, it would have been blocked. How clever a maneuver. Wildcats are 15 and 1 at home. Only lost a shocker to Evansville. Small change, foul in the low post. I think quickly, Bird, this is just amazing. Normally you go with that left hand, but now he knows the traffic is there, goes right back into the chest. Magnificent finish. And his ability to finish at the rim. He's 6'3", 198. But because of his tricky moves, he can create angles. Now you do the game for the Nets. How about Kyrie Irving like? Mm. Well, that's high praise, certainly. One of the best finishers in the game. At the free throw line, Okoro, who shoots it at 65%. And it's been an issue. Empty trip for Auburn. And the Kentucky's really been good with the basketball, too. No turnovers, solid. There's a little 1-3-1 one, one look. And they morph to your shape. And Kentucky is shooting it at 53%. Only two losses in the SEC this year to South Carolina and Auburn. Give up. Oh! Rack attack. Keon Brooks Jr. And what a great read by Brooks. Didn't stay at the foul line and count the house. Big time dive. It is a 10-0 run for Kentucky. Auburn started 7 of 11 from the field. They've made just one of their last eight attempts. They're really not getting into the teeth of the defense at all. Out he gives it up. Jumper doesn't go for Okoro. And a loose ball foul. Purifoy throwing the body around and he hit Maxi. 
Well, they had a pot of gold early making the threes, but this is just a beautiful maneuver against the zone and big time send it in by Brooks. Not a deep Kentucky team around eight guys, but each guy can be effective. That's three fouls now on Purifoy. Nine points, all from long range for Dangel Purifoy. Kentucky is nine of ten at the free throw line. Maxi shoots it at 82%. Freshman from Carlin, Texas. Late night on CBS as primary season heats up. Stephen Colbert's punchlines are primed and ready. What will Stephen say on the eve of Super Tuesday? The Late Show, new Monday after your late local news. Maxi can crack double figures here. What a turnaround from Kentucky. 31-23 thanks to a 12-0 run. Well, they stayed the course defensively, forced the deep threes, nothing in the post, nothing off the dribble drive. Automatic switching on the perimeter, too. Jumper doesn't go for Williams. Woo and put down on the follow. Cambridge showing off the hops. Goodness. He is athletic, that kid. Evan Cambridge, a freshman from Nashville, Tennessee. His brother Desmond transferred to Nevada from Brown University. Hagens gives it up quickly. Can't hit the three. And Cambridge again showing off the vertical on that rebound. Uh, defense was tardy, though they really dodged one that trip. Downey's. Oh, the pretty spin, but he missed it on the teardrop. Rebound scraped away by Brooks. But that's what Auburn has to do, though. Get inside. Nice cross. A little too much in traffic. No. And the follow goes. Maybe Brooks. I think it Brooks got in there after the Hagens miss. 33-25. Kentucky has made eight of its last 11 field goal attempts. Still got to go north and south. 40 to play in the first half. Uh, oh, Coro. Boy, that is a welcome sign. They've been struggling outside. Wiley with the wave in the post, and you know, nobody recognized him either. Uh, you mentioned the paint area. Kentucky has controlled it. 20 to 8 in favor of the Wildcats. They are so, uh, they got the offensive foul out. It's Brooks. Yeah, with the move. But the ability to put it down and mystify really sets you up a little lingerie on the deck here. Uh, got away with it. Uh, pretty good help. And take your pick down there. Boy, talked about his energy, Cambridge. They just crash unmercifully. First Kentucky turnover of the day. Good effort. Maxi nearly came up with a loose ball. And Auburn will retain with 22 to shoot. Nate Sestina now in the game for Kentucky. Remember, we always look at the pretty things, the offensive end, but being longer, getting your hands, getting deflections. This team is excellent on the perimeter, playing with three point guards, which is why they struggle sometimes on the glass. In Auburn's last game, they controlled Slip. the paint against the Re Rebels, and they're starting to establish it here with Wiley inside. They outscored Ole Miss 38 to 18 on the interior. They got to use the big guy a little bit more and that coordinated in the back, particularly weak side by Kentucky. First meeting with Kentucky, Auburn had 44 free throw attempts. 44. <laughs> Kick it out. Hagens, the drive. Hey, Sestina five. couldn't finish it. Here come the Tigers. Dowdy floats it up. Broken up by Sestina. And yeah, no, Cora's okay. Did he touch it last? They're going the other way. They said that's the way they pointed. What a great effort by Sustino to, to save a basket. Pretty good matchup right here in Lexington, KY. Kentucky has won seven in a row. The style of play so far today, Raph, try to get to the rim. Higher percentage shots, not leaning on the three-pointers. The mid-range game is alive, Bird. Uh, the ability to get to that 10. And therefore, you really dismantle the inside, sets up your kick-out game, but 
These three guards can dominate off that bounce, the speed, the power, the agility, the understanding of what shot, what release at that rim. Pretty impressive. Kentucky, seven of 12 on shots at the rim, four of nine on other two-point attempts. They have just two three-point attempts. Yet to make one, they are 11 of 12 at the free throw line. It's been a good formula so far for the Wildcats. They've got a three-point lead. Uh, they've worked on this just to attack the press. Ooh, a lot of guys would have taken that shot. Higgins. Nice dive to the rim, and oh, everything Montgomery up. could not finish it. I like the shot selection, but big guy got to finish the deal. Oh, Coro travel. A nice challenge again. That's what they've been overwhelming Auburn with closeouts under control, forcing issues, forcing mistakes. That is six Auburn turnovers now. Kentucky with just one. We'll hit the three minute mark of this first half. First place in the SEC for Kentucky of two games on Auburn. And this guy's got some offense now. Got the little left hook. Why not? There it is. E.J. Montgomery with a bucket. And if you're the defender, you got to know he loves going over that right shoulder. you got to force him the other way. 22 points in the paint for Kentucky. Nice, much better job on that ball screen. Williams and Okoro were having a catch. Now they get Dowdy involved with 10 to shoot. Dowdy against quickly. Right off the hands of Wiley to Okoro. But short on a three. Forget about it. Maxi. Good night. Tyrese Maxi rising up. It was the pass that sent it off. And then speed conquers. Boy, they are playing great basketball, these kids. And Tyrese Maxey has been a blur for Kentucky. 12 points in the first half. Tough shot. Cambridge rims out on a three. Got to go and get to the foul line if you're all burned. Quickly hands for Hagens. Under two minutes to go. Maxey didn't even think about that three out front. I think he heard the guy from Pittsburgh over his shoulder. <laughs> I believe it's Moon, Pennsylvania, is it not? <laughs> well, it's the local area there. There's Montgomery on a handoff. Quickly seven to shoot. He thought he got fouled. And he was complaining as he was shooting it. <laughs> now they love that rip through if the hand is on you. Dowdy zigzag move. Williams, bottom, it's a three. They are confident though, and that's all from that bench. And the first three of the season for Jalen Williams. Well, for four going in, right? Also played high school football, which is not surprising when you see him at 6'7", 230. So Auburn is 7 of 18 from three-point territory. A little envious there. <laughs> yeah, you did see that. Nice ball fake with standing. You can control it, though. Here's Hagens. Small against the big. Williams. Hagens. You can take this. Step back, Sestina. Book it. Well, 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 great two-man basketball. A three-ball from Nate Sestina, the first three of the day for Kentucky. 40 to 33 Wildcats. Dowdy probing, and he draws the foul with 35 seconds to play in this first half. Coming up, AT&T at the half. Greg Gumble, Clark Kellogg, Seth Davis. Highlights of the top 25 teams in action. Other SEC games already underway. That plus. First half analysis of our game. It's all coming up. AT&T at the half. Second foul on quickly. Uh, Sustainer was right there, too. They didn't communicate. He didn't have to foul. He was looming in the back. Sustainer does a nice job. We saw him sprint the floor, get back, handles the ball screen real well. Really fits in well with the offensive philosophy as well. Brad transfer from Bucknell. And as the season has gone on, I think he's figured out his role and where he fits in with Kentucky. It's, it's got to be unusual. Come from an entirely yeah. different philosophy. The demands here, every single play, because the level of the opponent, sometimes it's difficult for guys to ascertain. And a timeout called by Kentucky. 35.3 to play, first half. Back to Rupp after this. Kentucky is 11-1 since Emmanuel Quickly was inserted into the starting lineup. And Quickly 
has taken on more of the scoring role for John Calipari. It's been Maxi who's been more the go-to guy in this first half just based on the style of play. They are trying to get out on the break and make things happen in transition. Quickly, we'll get a breather here into the halftime break, playing with two fouls. Now John really develops his team. Everybody can get 25 points, or they have for him. So he knows that any given game, you don't have to count on one particular aspect of the offense. Auburn led by as many as nine early. It was screen down and ball screen. Four second difference. Shot clock, the game clock. Cestina, a three. Off the back of the iron. Rebound grab by Okoro. Oh, that was actually intercepted by his teammate. Cambridge stepped in. It would have ended up in the hands of Jalen Williams, and instead we get a tie-up. A, a good pass. It would have been a layup, uh, but pretty good recovery with those hands of Sestina. Sort of jarred it just a little bit. A little bit of a shove, and now Omar takes the timeout. And his shot of Steven Pearl. Cambridge tried to make an over-the-shoulder grab. He didn't see his teammate was in front of him. Bruce Pearl squad has 4.7 to work with here, trailing by five, tail end of the first half. Four losses this season for Auburn to Alabama, Florida, Missouri, and Georgia. Both of those were on the road, the Missouri and Georgia games. There's a big win with Kentucky at home. Thanks, Bolton. A terrific reaction defensively. Oh, it goes for McLemore. A prayer somehow gets in the hoop. Well, those baseline out of bounds. Coaches work them on both ends of the floor. That's too easy a catch. Yeah, Montgomery really got away with putting that hand in there. They should have really gone big, monstered that double, and a little help from above. Let's send it over to Tracy Wolfson. Thanks a lot, Coach. Down nine to start this one, but you guys fight all the way back to take the lead. What was the biggest difference you saw from your team there? We're playing through the bumps, the grinds, the holds, the hands. You got to play through it. You got to expect, like that last call, they're going to let it go. I just need everything. Let it all go. Let it. It'll be a, a boxing match. I'm fine. So it's a physical game. You got to play physical. All right, Tracy, thanks very much. I guess that's going to be a one-question interview. <laughs> End of the first half. Don't get physical with me. 37 Kentucky was into to Greg Gumbel in New York, AT&T at the half after this. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Mercedes-Benz, the best or nothing. And by Expedia. Connect every detail for every fan and every trip. Raph, you have some competition. <laughs> Lily wants the microphone. What I like about this, I'm working alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> baby races are a surefire hit in every halftime around the country. Let's take a look at the Coca-Cola first half stats. Points of the paint for Kentucky. Big key, 24 of them. They shot 48% from the field. I and Eagle along with Bill Raftery, Tracy Wolfson as well. Take your pick with Kentucky. Maxi, the go-to scorer. Hagens, though, making things happen as usual defensively and spreading it around on offense. Berg, you were always good at math. Twos shouldn't be better than threes, but they are tonight because of this guy. The ability to give it up early. Maxi able to finish it off. The extra pass here. Hagens, four assists. Very unselfish play. Dribble drive. Dive to the rim. And beautiful completion. Send it in. Now let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Well, I and I had a chance to talk with Bruce Pearl just coming out a few seconds ago. And what he said to me is we got so many fouls that we were unable to stay connected on defense. That's what he preached to his team all week. Stay connected, stay on them. But they weren't able to do that because of all the fouls called. And then they just let him run free. Expect them to get back, though, be more physical, and stay connected on those guys and try and limit them. He also wants to see more performance in the paint. And Tracy running free. Kentucky did that. 12 fast break points against Auburn while committing just one turnover. That is really impressive for the Wildcats. Uh, both clubs really getting it after you defensively. Big thing, I think, is staying at home, particularly on the dribble containment of Auburn. Force them to jack the three contested. And the other 
Get a piece of that paint. There's quickly. Leans in for two. And that's their game plan. I told you twos are better than threes. I've heard it's that. It's coming back. <laughs> Turn back the clock. Don't, don't well, stop Curry that. 42-37 Kentucky. McCormick got into early foul trouble. Williams gets the start in this second half, and he just tossed up an air ball. That's the big thing, contesting. Uh, but listening to the advice of the coach quickly, I might add, right there, the lean in, the ability to take that hit and counter. Kentucky with a chance to clinch the SEC regular season title with a win that would be their 49th in school history. Higgins out front, watched by McCormick. First minute of play here in the second half. Quickly, nice the bounce. Pass. And Richards could not finish it, but a foul. Got nicked at the rim. Bruce Pearl not happy about it. He's up at half court. And Richards not happy about it because he thought he should have had the easy dunk. Uh, Bruce is really animated. And they're just a hold on. No question about the foul. I don't think Bruce could see that, but uh, his inability to get airborne negated. Third foul on Austin Wiley. Richards, a 76% free throw shooter. The junior from Kingston, Jamaica. Declared for the NBA draft after his sophomore season, but elected to return to school, and that certainly turned out to be the right decision. He has shown off more skills, and the role has been larger. They have leaned on him more in his junior season. I think it was after Texas A&M, he came out and said, you know, the greatest thing that's happened that he has stayed here. It takes some players mm -hmm. longer to understand the distance they have to go to perfect their game. And you know, he's had a really silent year, a little up and down in the last couple. We're talking about him for player of the year. And I think you're right though about quickly, who you know, has had really a great run of late, although tonight not scoring as readily. McLemore has checked in for Wiley. Nice back door. And it's McCormick with the finish. 43-39, Kentucky. Also, Kentucky staying competitive in the rebounding category. That's an area that Auburn usually controls. Hagen stripped to the ball, turnover. Dowdy ahead. McCormick streaks to the rim, bank shot goes. And Dowdy with the hands at the other end, set it all up. Distributing beautifully and timely at the other end. Auburn cuts it to two. Calipari calls out a play. They'll work the perimeter. Sort of a little pin down now. Fade or curl. Nice hands. Goodness. Again, anticipation. Almost a second one that time earlier. You saw the ability of Daddy out of Philly. The great hands and just a timely delivery. And then the ability of these guards to body search and finish. Beautiful. Foul called against Dowdy. It sends Maxi to the free throw line. Maxi is four of four at the strike. He's like you, Maxi. He loves the bright lights. <laughs> I was prime waiting time. for the connection. A little prime time. But he just steps up. He likes the big opponents. Williams sits, replaced by Purifoy. Maxie's dad, Tyrone, played basketball at Washington State and was Tyrese's head coach in high school at South Garland. A little bump. So he misses the free right. throw and then gets called for the foul. It was a good hustle. It was a tip back, one of those 50-50 balls, and uh, just caught in midair here, unfortunately for him. Pretty good hustle, though. McCormick covering it. Auburn is the number three scoring team in the SEC, averaging 78.3 points per game. Bird, you had the you had their Elite Eight game, right? I did. Last year, Auburn's run to the Final Four. Doughty, in and out, and a rebound grab by Montgomery. Just put it on a deck and go to the rim. Higgins does that, but missed it on the bank. Nice steal. It's quickly stepping in. Quickly got it for three. Defense leads to offense for the Wildcats. He can put you to sleep quickly, too. What a great read jump in the passing lane. Apparently, it's that time for quickly. 47-41. And a steal. Higgins splits defenders but could not jam it. Did he call anything? Maxi rims out. Rebound grab by Montgomery. Kick out quickly. Misses it on a three ball. And knocked to the outside to Doughty. 
turns on the Jets, and he is fouled on the floor. No shot. Well, Higgins really trying to widen him out so he couldn't turn the corner to the edge. And Higgins still upset he didn't get the call on the other end. There was a lot of activity at that rim. Sustini gives one of the bigs, Montgomery, a little bit of a blow. Sustained effort. Very competitive on both ends. And now Juzang back in as well, the freshman from Los Angeles. Sustina has scored nine points. He played a big role in that first half. Okoro kicked for McLemore. Plenty of time on the shot clock here for Dowdy. Okoro not even getting touches. I like him on a matchup right here with Juzang. We'll pick and pop. Put it on the deck now. Okoro strong. Drive and kick. McCormick lines it up. And a oh, he's got it! And a three, plus one. Sestina is really good closing out and running by. And watched him in practice and in games. Generally doesn't get hooked up. Let's just see if a leg kick occurs here. Uh, he got him pretty good. Pretty flush. So a chance at a four-point play for the speedy Javon McCormick. Junior college transfer from Lee College in Baytown, Texas. 60% free throw shooter. Kentucky maintains a three point lead. Anybody can handle on the perimeter for these cats. Three guys who can put it down, make threes on the cat. A little push from the back, I saw it. Too high, Chizang yeah. tried to loop it in for Richards. Uh, Got away with it. Okoro back in on quickly, off the double team. McCormick whips it inside and it bounces off of McLemore. Shifting gears. Oh, nice. Oh, tough angle, Richards. Just great patience. He knew he couldn't dunk it. A lot of guys would have tried to grab it one hand and finish. Great understanding of where he was geographically. McCormick. Squares. Didn't need it. Misses from three-point territory. It's quickly living up to his last name. Oh, missed it with the left hand. And saved by Auburn. Frenetic right now, Bird. And who does that play to the strength zone? Well, I, I would, uh, both clubs like to go up and down, but I think Kentucky in favor. Doughty. Nice drop step. Spin. Banker goes with the offhand. Samir Doughty, who is the leading scorer for this Auburn squad at 16 points per game. This kid can go either way with the spin. Loves to go right, but boy, outstanding understanding off the bounce. A lead eight game in Kansas City. Auburn beat Kentucky 77 to 71 in overtime. Jared Harper had 26. Bryce Brown had 24. Pretty good backcourt, huh? Richards, left hand baby hook. Right now, that's the difference. Inside scoring, whether it's the dribble or the catch, versus the settle deep. And the 30 points in the paint for Kentucky. There's the spin. He loves it. Rejected on the inside. Richards came over to help. Five-point lead for Kentucky. Just over five minutes gone by. Second half. I think that's the difference in this Kentucky team. The contributions of the bigs will change the tide of this team. Oh, you got to get out on him. Sestina. Nice entry. Inside, Richards leans in and he won't get credit for it. Foul was called on the floor. And on one end, you got Dowdy uh, with his impact with the dribble, drop step, spin, finish the deal with a little kiss to the other end. The dominance out of the Patrick School in New Jersey. Big time finish number four, Richards. Need him. Been a fun one here at Rock 5146 Kentucky. Let's take a look at our AT&T fast analysis wrap. Uh, the ability to break up the zone with great understanding, ball movement, skip passes, fill in the right spot, and again, the old staple of KU, putting it on the deck and then transition. You don't get back, you pay mightily. The speed, the quickness, the unselfishness, and the ability to close the deal. And speaking of closing the deal, yeah. in 78, Joe B. Joe B. Hall, 91 years old and still attends every home game he can get to. And Sam Bowie, during the last timeout, big smile on his face, former Kentucky star, announced to this sellout crowd here involved, in Lexington. He was involved in Trotters 
on horses for quite a while. I don't know if you know that. But uh, Joe, uh, take a look at Sam. There's Kyle Mason, one of the great shoes. But Joe B. Hall, I told this story before. He and his wife, Joan, and I went to Ireland together to give clinics. Because <laughs> they didn't want to hear me. <laughs> and, and he, a nice little inbounds pass gets his Steena to go, but just a class act. Joe, champion, revered here. And Kentucky extends the lead, 53-46. Wildcats. Okoro has been quiet on the offensive end. Five points, one of four from the field. He got a bump from Sestina and a foul called. But Bruce is really working hard on the other side. You can see the ability of this kid, the strength to take on a bigger, maybe even stronger Sestina who just dislodges him. All he had to do is go straight up and they didn't call the initial bump. That is the fourth team foul against Kentucky. And it was the second hit that sent Okoro to the free throw line. So Stina will sit. Richards back in for Kentucky. It's Richards, Maxi, Montgomery, Higgins, and quickly the starting five on the floor for the Wildcats. These Kentucky guards don't get tired, Bird. Amazing. They need much rest. Isaac Okoro missed three games with a hamstring issue, and it showed. And Auburn had a tough time without him in the lineup. He had a sleeve on there last game, not today. He suffered it against Alabama. Auburn is just five of nine at the free throw line. Little pin down. Half court set here for Kentucky. It's quickly watched by Okoro. It's just so tough to tag them on those curls. They got a foul going the other way. I think it's Richards, too. That would be number three. It is. Thursday on CBS, the Cooper family has a lot of love, a little drama, and some really good laughs. Make Thursday your night in with a new episode of Young Sheldon, Thursday at 8, 7 Central, here on CBS. That is five team fouls and three personal fouls on Richards. It all started with the maxi lead pass that threw off the set. Right. Nice kick. McCormick, dribble drive, outside. Dowdy can't hit the three. Rebound, Okoro badly. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought Okoro fouled. He came from nowhere. A rather loose play right now. The officials really letting him go. I thought he came right over the back here. Mm. And Ma Montgomery felt the same as you. And now they got it on the big board, so first time anybody's agreed with me. Okoro on a kick. McCormick a three. Off. They go, they're going to stay here on this one now. And it's Montgomery who picks up the foul off the rebound. See, that's what's frustrating now. If the players aren't sure of how it is going to be called. But if you don't stick Auburn, they're going to put you right into the woodwork. And no question about that foul. Yeah, he got Pierre yeah. Foy on the yeah. shoulder. It just happened to take place following the sequence where Montgomery right. thought he got fouled. Off the inbound, tipped home by Wiley, sticking with the play sure for Auburn. 53-49, Kentucky. Higgins handles it. Montgomery pops outside. Stand with the man. I thought they might throw the zone a little bit. Force him to shoot the big deep one. Quickly, taking the baseline, working around the perimeter. Higgins, pretty control. The Euro off the rim and saved by Auburn. McCormick on the move. McCormick hey. is fouled on the teardrop. They're going to get Sestina, who had a clean look on a block. But they should have gone left with this pass. And pretty, pretty good recovery defensively, though, by Higgins. Billy, that is 17 fouls at the 12.42 mark for Kentucky. Not sure who they gave that to. Personal foul on Sestina. Yeah. Number three. Auburn's not taking advantage. What a rough and tumble game. All about making a stance now on checkouts. McCormick's scoring has gone up. 
nearly eight points per game from his junior year to his senior year. He was in a reserve role last year backing up Jared Harper, who is now on a two-way deal with the Phoenix Suns and the Northern Arizona Suns of the G League. 53-50 Kentucky. Bryce Brown is playing in the G League with the main red claws. Juma Okiki was taken 16th overall by Orlando, sitting this year out because of the injury. And Horace Spencer signed a deal in Argentina, so... Pretty talented yeah, group, right? Pearl, and his team went to the Final Four for good reason. And they got him back with only four losses. Pretty impressive. Right now, Brooks on the floor. Quickly is fouled. Okoro had the on-ball defense for Auburn. Well, and at number two. Team it up defensively on both ends of the floor. So competitive. Fourth team foul against Auburn and quickly, quickly is going to the free throw line where he's been nearly automatic. Four of four today. McDonald's All-American, two state titles. <laughs> And the Quickly family taking in the action today here at Rupp. 12 points, six rebounds, two assists. His mom, Natrice, played at Morgan State. It's very quiet here at well, Rupp. Free throw. This kid is some competitor, though. When you talk about his offense, he's not afraid to mix it up on this end. About stamina now, come down the next 12 minutes. McCormick handles it. Now they'll work it through Okoro. They'll make him use the bounce. Ooh, I thought he walked with that jump stop. McCormick sticks it from long range. How about that? That catch and jump and undetected. It's a two-point lead for Kentucky. Chris McCormick playing against that backcourt. You had to get better. Both teams shooting it at 45%. Chu Zhang back in for the Wildcats. He's just got to stay wide. They find and be organized. Nine to shoot. Quickly lines it up. Short. He got grabbed by Wiley. Big oh. strong. <laughs> Both hands. A good set of bits. Auburn with a chance for the tie. McCormick missed it through the hands of Wiley. Rebound knocked around and out of bounds off of Auburn. SEC regular season title is on the line for Kentucky with a win. They'll clinch it. Auburn trying to stay alive for the regular season crown. It's 55-53 Kentucky. Second half action continues on CBS. Over the summer, Emmanuel quickly, E.J. Montgomery, and other members of the Kentucky staff got together for a good cause. They held a basketball clinic for a group of outstanding young athletes with special needs. The annual event, which started in 2016, took place in nearby Versailles, Kentucky. Uh, this team is such a huge part of the community. Basketball oh, means everything. It's life-sustaining. Uh, you know, people for years, I did games, Kaywood Lentford. Yes, the, name, right? the legendary voice. By the way, a real pro. <laughs> Yes. I, insinuate it I agree. I agree. I, I actually was fortunate enough to do his last game ever. NCAA tournament? NCAA tournament. That's right. Final. He was the voice of the Final Four for many years. But as a youngster, you know, kids sit at home, listen to your dulcet tones now. Yes. We used to with him. Okay, you get a okay, Kentucky well, game back to New Jersey. Uh, before there was cable TV. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, before there was TV at all. Of course, Adolph Rupp, the giant of the... He's building his name. Wait a second. <laughs> we, were, we were poverty stricken, but not that bad. And the voice of Kentucky now, Tom Leach, does a tremendous job. He does. He gives his partner, Mike Pratt, a chance to talk on occasion. Well, they're a great combo. Oh, oh man. Use of the ball. Lucky to get it back. Off the deflection. Okoro hands to McCormick with Kentucky up by two. Purifying on the floor, two a danger with that three. Early on, he was knocking him down, but with fouls. Cambridge is in for Auburn, the freshman. Okoro stumbling, kick out Purifoy. Great job defensively to keep Okoro out. Shot clock is down to two. McCormick has to hoist. It does hit the rim. Rebounded by Okoro and a reload for Auburn. McCormick to the rack. No, tip in. Does
Does it go? There's a lid on the rim. A foul. A reach in. Cambridge. Well, talk about Kentucky playing small, but they are feisty. This one just frustrating for Wiley. An unfavorable cradle there at the rim. That was off, though. That cylinder goes straight up to the ceiling. First personal on Cambridge, the 15 foul against Auburn, and now Bruce Pearl will make some more changes. Cambridge sits with Okoro and Flanagan. Cambridge is where my safe school is located. <laughs> it really came down to Cambridge and Harvard. 55-53 Kentucky. Where they use both sides of the floor, really make you move. And a variety where it's the ball screen, the bumps, the pin downs. Past the midway point of this second half, a reach in on Wiley as we send it over to Tracy Wilson. I am Bruce Pearl's message to his team during that last timeout, wear them down. He said those guards played the whole first half. Don't rest, wear them down. They will tire, and you can beat them down the stretch. He said the only way we lose this game is if we play sloppy. A valid point, too. We're talking about stamina coming down the stretch, but they're tireless, these Kentucky guards. Tracy, you mentioned it early. The last time Auburn won here at Ruff, 1988. Shot clock down to two. Quickly puts it up. And a reach that's that rip through they love. He is fouled on the outside by the freshman Flanagan. Three free throws for Emmanuel Quickly. Uh, they are so good at this. They feel that hand coming forward. Bang! Uh, rip it across the body, get some attention, and a chance for three. Quickly with 13 points. He hasn't missed at the line. This year, the leadership qualities have really shown for Quickly, who has stepped forward in his sophomore season, hard-nosed. Hagen's currently on the bench with Montgomery and Sestina. 56-53, Kentucky. Wildcats are making their free throws. Having this kid is such such a luxury, though. It is machine-like for Emmanuel Quickly, second in the nation in free throw shooting. Kentucky as a team, 17 of 20. See that Antoine Davis, Mike Davis's son. How about that? In Detroit, yeah, your former Indiana coach. And Quickly calmly hits three. Give him a little rest now. Hagens comes in. That's really the first substitute they've gone through. And Hagens is taking a blow. Now they rotate him. Quickly sits. He got a little bump from Flanagan at the end of that free throw in the two exchange oh. words. So just something to keep your eye on later. A little love tap. 9-18 to play in this second half. Flanagan flips it home and the foul. How about that? Dribble drive. Alan Flanagan, the Arkansas High School Player of the Year out of Parkview Magnet. Pretty strong move, too, with that dribble. Juzang never got him to turn. That's why he's out of the game right now. He's got to at least take one dribble drive, make him reverse a little bit. And the second foul on Juzang. Flanagan not shooting it well at the free throw line this season, but that was a good-looking stroke. And it's 58-56, Kentucky. Man, pretty good with that bounce. A little spin move as well he possesses. Don't foul and guard. That's going to be the key coming down the end of this game. Maxi outside. Hagen's a three. Oh, off the rim. What a rebound. They're going to stay right there. Boy, Richards does. Plies his trade. He got shoved under the rim and still a big reach. Able to get a piece of it. And it tracked the body. Of course, yep. you got to shoot it soft enough for the bigs to be able to do something like this, but just couldn't cradle it. And that's three now on McLemore. Richards at the line, a 76% shooter. He can crack double figures with a make. He's also gotten stronger. Yeah, that, that's the other part. You forget about the physical nature. He only started playing basketball at the age of 14 in Jamaica, so the development 
is part of the process for Richards now in his junior season. His favorite sport, obviously, was soccer. It was. He played volleyball as well as a kid and ran track. Uh -huh. Well, you refereed volleyball. <laughs> I, I never did that. On the beach once. <laughs> uh, but you're right. He is a big, strong kid and can run the floor. Gazelle-like. 59-56 Kentucky. Williams look down low. Instead, they'll keep it on the perimeter with McCormick. There's a little screen and then a rescreen. Nice string out by Richards. Just a little thing. They could use a lot of the clock. Six to shoot. McCormick kicked up in the air and a high kick by Hagens. Coming up Tuesday on CBS, the candidate who wins big on Super Tuesday moves one step closer to being your president. CBS News brings you full coverage and analysis Tuesday, 8, 7 Central on CBS and the CBS News app. Now, yesterday, John Calipari was talking about droughts. They have had a problem scoring of late. No field goals. Got to create some offense with the bounce or some post-ups. Javon McCormick, eight to shoot. Williams, nice check. too strong. Montgomery, the weak side rebound. And you're right, Kentucky has now gone six plus minutes without a field goal. Keon Brooks Jr. back in. Overload. Trying to get Maxi moving without the ball, and a foul is called on Flanagan working around the screen. We have a stoppage at the 7.59 mark. Coming back to Lexington after this. CBS Sports College Basketball coverage is sponsored by Nissan. Get to Nissan now for big President's Day savings. Zaxby's featuring fresh made chicken tenders, wings, and salads. And by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 1 800 State Farm. It's been 32 years since Auburn last won a game here in Lexington. Let's take you back, Phil. Down to 10 seconds remaining. Auburn's John Kaler nailed a huge jump shot, a three to get the Tigers the lead. Kentucky had one last chance. Rex Chapman shot off the mark. Number one, Kentucky fell to Auburn. 53-52 since then. Kentucky has won 17 straight here against Auburn. The head coach, Sonny Smith who was just named to the Alabama Sports Hall of Fame. And now, the analyst on Auburn Radio. Unbelievable sense of humor. A character. Look at this. So going back, Bruce Pearl in 1988 was an assistant with Iowa. John Calipari received his first communion. <laughs> He was an assistant with Pitt. Some people say he still has his first million of money, which is used often. And now he's got plenty of it. But this old Bruce started with Tom Davis. A lot of the things he espouses are from Dr. Tom. Speaks fondly of him. E.J. Montgomery at the free throw line. I was trying to think of something clean that Sonny has told me that it's humorous. <laughs> Apparently, I can't, I can't come up with one. Nothing that you can sanitize. No, not, not at all. Montgomery shoots it at 66%. McDonald's All-American from Fort Pierce, Florida. By the way, he's a bootlegger's son, so that's one attraction we both have for him. 61-56. Wildcats, 21 of 25 at the free throw line. It's been a different story from the first meeting when Auburn took the lion's share of the free throws. Now this is that offensive top then a nice slap back, but relying on that deep shot. McLemore keeps it alive. Dowdy nice. gives it up. Okoro, it's blocked by Hagens. Late whistle and a foul. Said he went across uh, the arms, but again, the ability to attack the class, be persistent. Bruce's yeah. guys coming up those empty little opportunities. And the third foul on Ashton Hagens. Isaac Okoro back to the free throw line where he is three of four. That stroke is pretty impressive, really. And talking to Bruce about going from high school to this level, that's quite a distance for a player 
but it's a good looking stroke and it's only going to get better. Well, you talk to anybody associated with the Auburn program, they said he is a tireless worker, so the work ethic is there to improve his game. That's why the ceiling still has some room to grow. You love it, a lot of good things happen. Seven plus minutes without a field goal, yet Kentucky still leads Auburn. 61 58. A nice job of a low post, and they finally get McElroy. Which way are they going to go with it? Well, John Calipari is talking to They're his going team. this way. I think two different. Well, let's see. The two different calls. If it's on Richards, it's his fourth foul. Are they going to call it double? McLemore goes down on the play here as he took a shot to the head. Uh, they're going to go to the SEC office to look at this one. And McLemore may have lost a contact lens. Yeah. You know, I thought the outside official at one called the inside official. They both blew the whistle. Uh, now they're going to check for a flagrant, I, I'm guessing. Gene Steratore watching as well as we're uh, getting the word here from KB for debt wrap. We're going to check in with Gene and get his thoughts. Gene? It's a foul on four, Gene. It looked to me like they potentially could have had a double foul. I know they're going to probably look at Richards. My assumption would be because of that right arm being up so high. Uh, I saw the official go to Raft. Did he give you any, uh, yeah, any he just ideas said of what they were a, looking a at? A foul, and they're checking to see if it's a flagrant. You're right. They're not booing your analysis, that, that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so they initially went with a foul against Richards, and they're seeing if they're going to raise that to a flagrant one. Correct. I don't believe it is. He's not looking no. back at him. It looks like a regular basketball move. Yeah. I don't I, think that they'd make that a flagrant one, though. No, you're right, Gene. That has been confirmed. It is a common foul. But the bigger headline for Kentucky is four fouls on Richards, and it's a turnover as Kentucky is trying to find its way on the offensive end. Gene should have tried refereeing. He really knows the work. <laughs> 61-58, Wildcats, Okoro. Nice strip to the ball by Hagens and a steal. He averages two per game. Hagens to the rim. Well, Samir nice Downey wanted to travel, but Hagens picked up the dribble. Well, a nice non-call because it was deflected. Five-point lead for Kentucky. We are under seven minutes to play. Something inside, somehow. Don't settle. Hagens has three steals today. McLemore, that slingshot delivery, it doesn't go. And Montgomery flies in for the rebound. You get to the free throw line, you got opportunities. Hagens taking his time, Okoro with the defensive assignment. That is a good time to pull the plug a little bit, rest their perimeter guys in particular. Sustina back in, he'll set the screen. Hagens wasn't looking pick and pop, instead the jumper. Sustina with a great job. Getting to the rim, the roll, you don't get a touch, but great aggressive pursuit of the basketball. Well, you've got to be strong. A nice hold off. Well, what a welcome addition this kid is in terms of rotation. Third foul on Okoro. Where you want to play this game inside, you've got to be tough. Sestina missed it. Shoots it at 77%. For Auburn, number three, Williams. Well, a lot of coaching going on. Everybody's got a player over there for Kentucky. Ooh, two opportunities. Clock problem didn't start. Shot clock. Yep. They got to get that sorted out. 6.17 to play. Can you hear John in the background? Rebound. Oh, Perry. Undersized against a team that pursues it big time. Here's Dowdy. Watched by Maxi. Dowdy. No good on a three ball. I, I just like them going at the rim a little bit. Auburn is 9 of 29 from long range. I think they feel they can go get it, but this is a terrific unit pursuing the basketball, Kentucky. 
Higgins fakes the pass now, keep it on the perimeter, quickly coughs it up. They got a foul call. And it's going to stay right here. And Bruce Pearl has gonna get taken one. the jacket off. He's got to be careful. They're looking. He's got to go right to the dry cleaner. I would say he's irate. But under control, irate. That's three now on McCormick. He's got that look that you give Alicia when you don't like the meal at the house. <laughs> It's usually takeout. <laughs> Quickly's free throw won't count. They had blown the whistle, even though Quickly had gone into the motion. John Calipari. So once you give the ball, it's two free throws. Calipari's point. Once you give him the ball, Quickly's yeah. ready to shoot it. Great motions, huh? At the zenith right here. These two teams will play in the SEC tournament. That's going to be incredible. It does feel like that, doesn't it? No. High level. He's got it back. Goes to Meduse. Quickly is 10 of 10 at the free throw line. Did you ever throw your jacket on air? I mean, you've worked with <laughs> <laughs> No, never. You have. I, well, there I, is video of you I, I with did. no jacket at Seton Hall. Well, the ja they always gave it back. It was so cheap. 65-58, 29 free throw attempts for Kentucky. There you go. Something at the tough shot. But oh, what the heck? off balance delivery. Back that, to a five point game. Got that open middle to pursue. Side to side. Richards remains on the bench in foul trouble. Higgins, what a fake. Higgins denied by Purifoy and a break opportunity. Okoro going end to end. Foul is called before the jam. Good foul. Smart foul. Steely kept it alive, and unfortunately for him and Kentucky, the Tigers came up with it. He was steamrolling ahead and quickly recognized that this was going to be a bucket. Good foul. Third foul on quickly. Rotation continues. Richards back on the floor. So at the 5-12 mark, Richards back in. Sestina to the bench. Okoro with nine points on six of eight at the line and misses on the second attempt. Rebounded by Quickly. Hagens, Quickly, Maxi, Montgomery, and Richards with McCormick, Okoro, Dowdy, Purifoy, and McLemore for Auburn. Kick. Hagen's a three. Look at this rebound. They know both guys going after it. Good check average. It's good to come up with it. Doughty is fouled with 4.45 to play. Doughty heads to the line with his team down by four. The rebounding numbers are all tied up 31 31. Coming up tonight, 6 Eastern on CBS Sports Network, 17th ranked BYU looks to end the regular season on a high note. They visit Pepperdine on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Two smart plays. Drive into the rim, McCormick and then Dowdy. Just keep it up, put the pressure on them. Interesting with Kentucky, the other end, they rest a little with the guards, get a little pace. That way they can tee it up big time at the defensive end. The other night, Auburn held Old Miss's Brian Tyree to three of 19 from the field, the SEC's leading scorer. So Auburn can lock you down and give you fits on this end of the floor. Maxey takes it outside with 11 to shoot. Screen, Richards. Shot clock at six. Richards squares. Cops. Yes. He can make that shot. That was a little deeper than normal. But boy, is he grown. Stature and confidence. 67-62, Kentucky. McCormick hands Okoro off the front rim on a three ball. Don't really need it here. We are under the four-minute mark. Calipari just pointed at Maxi. He hands for Hagens. 
The Kentucky lead is five. And it's always in the hands of guys who don't cough it up. No turnovers. Little horns look and a roll. High low, and they got him. Four to shoot. Maxi, too strong. Rebounded by Okoro. Whew. Richards has got to get in touch when he's got his guy. McCormick. Look Off the Richards. iron, loose ball foul underneath. McLemore was held by Montgomery, I think. 67-62, Kentucky leading Auburn. Time right now for the Capital One rewarding performance. A maximum effort by Maxi. Not afraid to go to the rim, put it on the floor, make entry passes. 13 points, six rebounds, four assists. And this was just a magnificent layup early in traffic. He's got speed, he's got hops, he's got finish, he's got game, as they say. Billy, the foul was called on quickly, his fourth. So he and Richards with four apiece. And Auburn at the free throw line with McLemore, who shoots it at 66%. Tigers are 11 of 18 at the strike. McLemore, the senior from Warwick, Georgia. Third last year, seven SEC teams made the tournament. This year, there's a lot of bubble teams. That, that should be a great get-together from tournament time, SEC tournament time. Of course, you got a good one next week with Florida. It'll be Florida hosting Kentucky in Gainesville. And the LSU beat Texas A&M today. Of course, Mississippi State. Little pal Ben Allen, one of those guys probably on the bubble. Wiley in, McLemore to the bench. Auburn has cut the Kentucky lead to three. Keon Brooks in there. I'd like to see the bigs get a touch here. Maxi, one on one with McCormick, eight to shoot. Maxi, try to do it himself. Gets to the rim. That's Tyrese Maxi with a pretty move. And Richards did a nice job occupying his guy to give that opportunity. Five point lead, Kentucky. Wiley, Wiley rolls oh, to the rim, oh, couldn't finish it. Rebound and a foul called against Auburn. Now, Wiley had not been on the floor. He feels he got fouled. Well, Bruce is really working the officials, but this is something he just got in the game. His first touch, not soft enough on the completion. They walked to the other end. It was Keon Brooks who got in defensively on Austin Wiley. The foul was on Okoro, his fourth. Richards to the free throw line. Kentucky at the stripe is 23 of 29. That's 79%. Yeah, you mentioned him staying, and uh, this has really, I think, fostered a bright career for him. They are right at the number that they've shot at this season as a team. Last year, he averaged four points in 10 minutes. Amazing. Both ends of the floor, he competes. Agile big man, sticks a pair. Kentucky extends, 71-64, 2.36 to play. Need some quick hitters. Auburn needs a quality possession. Purifoy a three. Box out, quickly the board. And they have confidence in that shot, but once in a while, you got to think about attacking. They approach two minutes in the second half. Maxi taking his time, quickly pops to the outside, off the back of the iron. Look at the kid go after Richards. And a tie-up. Richards and Wiley, possession arrow to the Tigers. And, and you know, we talked about stamina. These kids can run wide open for the jumper and then the ability to big. Look at the strength, rip it apart. Auburn has shot 29% from the field in the second half. 1.55 to play in regulation. McCormick makes his move. Nice cross. Takes it in on Maxi. Big shot doesn't go, but a foul. Well, he plays bigger than he is, doesn't he? Agreed. Oh, he is just a wise old owl off the dribble and around the 10. 
Javon McCormick is one of three at the line. Really done well on the road of late. That is almost 18 points on the road, Bird. Not afraid of the bright lights. Hagens replaces Keon Brooks Jr. 150 on the clock. Well, in a, in a year, no one knows who's going to be in the final four. Yeah, complete mystery. I mean, you just got to keep playing hard as a team. These are two high-level programs. But beware. Down the road. Empty possession for Auburn. Kentucky using clock. A minute 34 to play. Ooh, almost jumped that pass in that little half-court trap. They get something at the rim because of it. And a foul called a lot of time. Wow. Off the clock. Downey just he, giving Patrick Evans a piece of his mind. He must not be saying the wrong thing, so normally the official would react. They got hands on. And no, no question about the foul. He got ball, but they, he also got arm. Even in Philly's playground, that might be called what? So it's Maxi at the line, 82%. You want to talk an area where this team could benefit come NCAA tournament time, combination of guard play and free throw shooting. Right. Uh, and you know what's interesting? John yesterday was saying, Kyle Perry, that they have to guard our three perimeter people. Mm -hmm. So there is a disadvantage on occasion on the one end, particularly on the glass. But boy, to chase these three, you need some motors. And Raph, Kentucky has its largest lead, 73-64. Oh, <laughs> Go in there on Richards. Nick the quick. What a reaction from the other box. This is team basketball. The heights of ecstasy for most of us. He almost got that off the glass as well. Auburn has missed its last five shots. Hagens went for the steal. McCormick misses it badly from long range. Rebound knocked around. And controlled by quickly with 108 remaining. Auburn looking for one last defensive stand, but the numbers don't favor them with 55 seconds on the clock and a nine-point game. Maxi to the cup. D9 by Wiley. Big time block underneath as he pinned it on the glass. Nice look. The skimmer kick. Purifoy a three. They need it. Rebound to Hagens. Final 40 seconds. Well, no one likes to lose. I think John Calipari knows that Bruce has had the better of him the last couple of times out. So this has got to be satisfying and a little disheartening for Bruce Pearl. Auburn won the game earlier this season at home. Won the game in the Elite Eight last year in the NCAA tournament. Maxi missed it long. 14 seconds left. Dowdy cross, tip in goes for Wiley, 9.4 on the clock. Now they're going to play it out. What a great atmosphere, huh? Kentucky wins the SEC regular season title as they knock off Auburn, 73 to 66. And the streak continues here at Rupp over the Tigers. That's 18 consecutive home wins against Auburn. Kentucky 24 and 5. They are 14 and 2. And they earn the top spot in the SEC. Back with more coming up from Lexington. Another win for the Wildcats.